We call the meeting to order. This meeting of the Hopkinton Select Board is being held <clears throat> both in person and remotely using the video conference platform Zoom, pursuant to Section 20 of <coughs> Chapter 20 of the Acts of uh, 2021. Select Board Member Amy Ritterbush will be participating remotely, and all other members of the Select Board are present for this meeting in the Town Hall Room 215 216 in person. At this time, I'll, uh, at this time, I will ensure that the select board members participating participating remotely can hear and be heard. Um, Amy, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? We can hear you just can fine. You look great. You look fantastic. <laughs> great to see you. Great to see you. Yeah. Um, I also want to note that Elaine Lazarus will be participating remotely tonight via Zoom. Uh, the public has the option of attending in person here at Town Hall or via Zoom uh, using the link posted in the meeting's agenda. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and all votes will be taken by a roll call vote. Before we get started, uh, should we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Hi, Brent. All right. No worries. I got started because I know you have a game to watch tonight. <laughs> we all do, yes. All right, public forum. Uh, please note that each person will have up to two minutes to speak. At public forum, please st state by please start by stating your name and address. Recognizing that there may be people at the, uh, at the meeting in person and participating remotely who would like to speak, we'll go to the room first. Is there anyone in the meeting room who would like to speak at public forum? Seeing none, except <laughs> my fellow board member. Thank you, uh, Muriel Kramer, 39 North Street. Um, I just wanted to share something really powerful that happened. Um, and is ongoing and, and everybody has a chance to participate in it. Last Friday night I was privileged to attend the performance at the HCA of the Laramie Project, the story about the brutal murder of Matthew Shepard, a young gay student at the University of Wyoming that was killed because he was gay in 1998 in Laramie, Wyoming. It's called the Laramie Project. A murder that shocked the nation, na national con conscience, and like George Floyd's murder in 2020, this is similarly. The Laramie Project is the result of more than 200 interviews that capture the breadth of response, responses members of the community and beyond head to the brutal hate crime, the ways it was hard for many to accept the crime as a hate crime, the ways some refused to confront the realities exposed in their midst, and importantly, the ways the community and the nation grew in the aftermath. We do have a long way to go, but it was a turning point for equality in the United States. The play is essentially truly one long, difficult conversation about Matthew, his murder, and the ways we still need to confront hate, biases, and inequalities. It could serve as a model for the many conversations we still need to have, particularly about violence towards trad other traditionally marginalized communities in the United States. So <clears throat> it is an amazing show, a very difficult subject done very, very well. I hope as many people as possible will see the show this Friday or Saturday. Um, the shows begin at 7.30. I know that there are many student rates, student rush rates, even free tickets available. Um, I do think also that HCAM was hoping to um, have taped it and possibly it'll be um, available more broadly. Um, and then the last thing I'd, I'd want to say on that is if you're looking for a way to get involved, to act, to sort of elevate the concerns of um, the LGBTQIA plus community. Find an organization to donate to either your, your treasure or your time and, and, uh, and find a way to, to identify yourself in the community broadly as an ally and make your contribution. Um, thank you so much. It was amazing. Thank you. <coughs> uh, I'll make a comment if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah. Friday, there was an early release and I happened to be right downtown, and there must have been over a hundred students 
uh, walking around at Bill's and getting yogurt and all that sort of thing, and they were in groups. And there wasn't one group that wasn't a diversified group. There wasn't one group of all one, all women, all men, all colors. It was a very, very diversified group. So I think Hoppington deserves a little pat on the back for that. Their kids are going to lead the way for us. Was this a plug for diversity or for Bill's yogurt? Diversity. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Bill sold yogurt, but I'm all over. No, that. no, there's a yogurt place in downtown too. They were all over the main street. And there must have been over 100. Thank you, Mary Jo. Uh, ben, do we have anyone on Zoom with a hand raise? All right. So we shall move on. Um, the board will consider approving the consent agenda consisting of, number one, approving the minutes of the September 28th and October 5th, 2021 meetings, and appointment of Janine LeBlanc as uh, the Conservation Commission's representative on the Trail Coordination and Management Committee to a term expiring June 30th, 2024. Would any uh, board members like to break anything out for a separate vote? No. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the consent agenda as written. Second. Okay, we have a motion and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. Hearing none. Um, <laughs> we're going to do a roll call vote. Is Amy on? She is on Zoom. Oh, yeah. She's on Zoom. Uh, Amy Rubens, yes. Muriel Kramer, yes. Ted Stone, yes. Lafrenier, yes. And Rafana Sorolla, mm -hmm. yes. So we have a pretty full house here, and I think. Uh, in fact, Mr. Chair, we'll move on to item number five, COVID-19 update. Okay. With your permission, and we'll circle back to this later. Sure. Um, so, COVID-19 update. <laughs> Sean McCall of the Public Health Depart Director will update the board on the town's response to COVID-19 pandemic. Sean, I'm going to be that guy tonight. I'm holding you to five minutes. My Red Sox are on. I can do it in four. <laughs> <laughs> four minutes. Awesome. All right. You're on. You're on. So, thank you for having me. Um, so, as a community, we've been doing really well. I mean, it's, it's been in the papers. Um, we are seeing a significant, I, I would say, a significant uh, uptick this week in our cases uh, where our positivity rate had been uh, around, what, last week it was at 1.3. I expect it to be north of 2 this week, um, where our weekly case rates from August 1st through mid-October had generally ranged from 15 to 20. We've already had 29 cases um, since Saturday evening. So we've, it's a significant uptick considering the fact that we tend to get the bulk of our cases um, on the back end of the week. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I expect to have a, a weekly case load about, it was definitely in the 30s, if not a little over 40. Um, what we're seeing is that our cases are coming from, you know, unrestricted um, gatherings, um, both adult and children. And then we're seeing um, an increase in work travel and just um, travel in general. And um, it's those cases uh, or it's that those activities that appear to be driving a lot of our uh, numbers. So, you know, the, the, we're seeing the greatest growth in case numbers in unvaccinated youth, the 30 to 49 year old age group, and the 50 to 64 year old age group. Um, Amy's seniors at the senior center are still leading the way. And, um, so as a department and as the board, you know, we just want to remind people to limit your exposures outside of your households, gather outside when possible utilize face coverings and practice social distancing and really try to refrain from unnecessary travel if we can um, and if we do those we believe that we'll be able to uh, get this kind of uptick back under control um, that kind of leads the way into um, our position on masks in general and the off-ramping um, in the schools given the increase given the um, increase um, that we have in the schools, pending holidays, anticipated increases in holiday travel, um, the moving from outdoor events to indoors, 
we really don't believe that this is the right time to uh, off uh, to off ramp and to uh, go mask free in the schools yet. Like we believe that um, once we get the five to eleven year olds vaccinated, we get the teachers booster shots. Um, and then we provide boosters to the rest of the community. We'll be in a much better and stronger position as a community, and we'll be able to uh, experience a, a fairly normal um, holiday season. Um, but our fear is that if we start breaking it out and relaxing, um, it could be a, a bit of a rough holiday season. And uh, I think last year was, you know, something that we don't want to go through again. Um, Travel, um, just to note that the CDC has updated their international travel guidance um, to now include testing um, upon return to the US. So they're um, requiring people to test between days three and five. Um, that's, we, we received this week alone probably five um, inquiries about international travel. And I would just want the residents to be aware that this just went into effect. Um, you know, Norman and I had a good discussion, and uh, Halloween is not canceled. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you know, we, this last year too. We don't have yeah, to know. But we, you know, we, we executed really well last year, <clears throat> and there's no reason to believe that we can't do it again this year. We're in a better position. We have stronger vaccination rates. We know more about the virus. So if we just um, follow through with what we did last year, we'll be in great shape. That being said, you know these indoor gatherings are, um, are a problem. And um, we want people to be aware that they shouldn't be hosting large indoor Halloween um, gatherings. Um, moving on. Um, You're up against it. Yep. Uh, so we're hosting a, a vaccination clinic, a Pfizer booster clinic, and high dose flu on the 28th. We just acquired 250 doses that we intend to provide to the teachers to get them boosted up. And then we're um, finalizing our plans to get the five to 11 year old kids vaccinated. We're gonna pre-order doses so we have them on hand and we can just jump right in to start providing those uh, clinics. Um, and then if everything works right, we believe that we can have everybody vaccinated um, in the five to 11 year old age group by uh, the first week of December, which would then really set us up in a, a good place for uh, the Christmas holiday or for just for the holidays in general. Um, and then we'll have Moderna and other boosters and we'll be focusing on providing those booster clinics after uh, we take care of the, uh, the children. Awesome. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Six. 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 Twenty percent over. Right. <laughs> no, just uh, from from the community and this board. Thank you so much for all you have done and all you do in your your department and your board as well. Oh, thank you. I mean, I it's it's it. the, this support um, is really what fuels us, and uh, and uh, it's my you know, it's my pleasure. It's my job. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Are we ready? Uh, we will move on to number six. Move on to the next one. <laughs> okay. So uh, appointments, uh, employees and officials. The board will consider affirming the town manager's appointment of new employees and officials. Uh, the board will consider the appointment. Oh, wait a minute. We will go to the town manager appointments. It, it, yeah, thank you. Through the chair, let's begin with uh, Karen Cook Ryder. Uh, she's replacing George Robinson uh, as the new van driver at the senior services. Ben? Are they on, Ben? No. No? Let's move on. Okay, we'll move on to Jessica Miller. <clears throat> Jessica Miller? Yes. Is she? Oh. Oh, oh here she is. We have her live. <laughs> Even better. Right here? Yep. Thank you. 
Uh, Jessica Miller is replacing NTA as the young adult librarian. Uh, Jessica, welcome. Thank you very much, sir. Um, she comes uh, to this position with the following relevant experience. Uh, she's worked as a substitute reference librarian here in Hopkinton, uh, a circulation assistant at the Milford Public Library, and she's a veteran of the United States Army, worked as an operations officer for over nine years. Um, when we spoke with individuals that have supervised and work, worked alongside you, here's what they told us. Uh, that you are widely knowledgeable uh, and have wonderful, exceptional customer service skills, uh, especially when you're working with uh, children and young adults. Uh, that you are highly competent, intelligent, hardworking, and a problem solver. And finally, you're personable, approachable, and thus we believe this would work well for you as a young adult librarian here in Hopkinton. Thank you. Well, I had uh, reviewed your resume and application and uh, I was very, very impressed. Um, I want to thank you for your service to the country. Um, it seems like you've, you know, you have extensive experience and uh, from my perspective at least, I think uh, you'll be a, a positive uh, addition to, to our library staff. Um, board members? I got a question. Um, okay. uh, uh, thank you also for your service. Um, I wonder, it's not really a question. I was very impressed as others pro probably were with your application materials and your letter. Maybe you could just share quickly with the public what inspired you to go into um, this line of work for young adult library work. Definitely. Um, firstly, I fall in the footsteps of my twin sister who is a librarian in uh, Weston, Massachusetts, and that was my first inspiration. And then secondly, I worked, especially when I was company commander, with lots of young soldiers um, whose parents had to sign their enlistment documentation like mine did, and realizing that that is a, pub a portion of our population that is underserved and often neglected because they're not yet adults, but not children either. And so I want to make an impact on our community as well as um, the broader community of the young adults that will grow and then develop into wonderful adults and then fledge into the world. And I just want to make a little stamp on those individuals. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Yeah. So, you're up, you're up. Hey. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm very impressed with this. Um, if you were quartermaster for the 10th Mountain Division? Yes, ma'am. Which is in New York, which is really close to us. We had a lot of guys from there doing our services here in town. Um, I also wanted to uh, bring out the fact you went to Simmons, which is an excellent school for library work. And uh, I used to live right next to there. I went to Beth Israel. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. And, um, then I just, I think just the fact that you've got two bronze stars and a meritorious service medal, I want to th thank you again for, y for your service. And um, it's an outstanding resume. We're glad to have you. Welcome aboard. Thank you, Pam. Yeah, so I don't speak on the library stuff. I'm not really <coughs> big into libraries. Um, but I will tell you, uh, I'm very super impressed with your work in the military. Uh, one bronze star, one bronze star is, is impressive in itself. Two is... Uh, unbelievable. I have a, a very good friend that had two bronze. One was upgraded to a silver. Oh, wow. um, and uh, the, the work that, uh, that he and you did to earn those, are uh, I cannot fathom the work that you did. So thank you very much for your, for your service. Um, and uh, that's all I got. Thank you, sir. Um, <clears throat> Amy. Amy. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I'm, I read through your resume and everything um, looks great. And I just love it to go to my heart as well. My sister is also a good middle club ring. <laughs> and um, I'm really impressed with your ROTC scholarship for four years. My sister in law did that too, and I know it's really hard to get, and you really have to be an excellent candidate. So we're welcome for it. Thank you very much. Um, should we go through all the appointments before we take the votes or do single one? motions just to go through them would be helpful all right Thank then you. i request a motion to approve the town manager's appointment of uh, jessica miller as the young adult librarian so moved so moved 
Second. Okay, here a motion is seconded. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, roll call vote. Lafreniere, yes. Touchstone, yes. Miro Kramer, yes. And our process. And our finest really yes. Welcome aboard. Glad Thank you very it. much. Thank you so much. Yeah, and for the board's information, uh, you may not know, Jesse McCarthy, she's the interim library director. That's why I'm sitting here. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're going back to Karen Kubrider. Think yeah. of it. Yes, the event driver. Okay. It's um, is she here? Ben. All right. You want to liven her up? Okay. Take it away, Mr. Kamalo. Yes. Th think of it. Hey, Karen. Okay. Hey. Hello, how are you? Hi, everybody. How are you? Good. Uh, for the board and for the public, think of it this way. Um, Michael Lee's No Respite Center, Certified Spiritual Director and End of Life, Duala, Faith Community Church. This is Karen's experience, and she is the individual we're bringing in to provide essential transportation services for our seniors. She is dependable, responsible, engaging, and most spectacularly respectful of others and handles situations with dignity for the customer. I'm recommending Karen Cooprider as our next then driver senior services thank you um karen can you hear us i can i'm sorry for the background noise i'm actually in florida and cars are driving by at Tennessee, so okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh i feel so i feel so bad for you i, I can hear you <laughs> i'm sorry but I, I, I can hear you great uh you want to tell us um, tell us a little bit about why you're interested in being the uh the van driver uh, yeah, I am, um, so I've, I've been in Hockington for 24 years now, um, and I've very much been a community person, whether it was Little League, Ford, or um, I have, you know, the neighborhood block parties, and, and um, my kids in school, and so I could be with PTA, and, and um, I know some of the board members through our kids and, and whatnot. So I've been involved in the community, I've been involved in the community church for years. Um, I was a, a director of student ministry and uh, long experience driving 15 passenger vans and <laughs> box trucks to retreat the mission trips and that sort of thing. Um, I'm a very, I, I think what I enjoy most is, I, I worked at Bitter Creek, that was one of my jobs that I had more recently, um, but one of the things I really enjoy is relationships and people. And recently, um, I do spend a lot of time at Assisted um, living with my mother-in-law. I find myself hanging out with elderly folks quite a bit, and just love being with them, hearing their stories, sharing life, that sort of thing. So I, I also an end of life doula, or certified as an end of life doula. I haven't been practicing that yet. I'm pretty new at that, um, but been enjoying kind of just that that this season of life with, and. and and the wisdom and interesting stories and whatnot of people who are older than me and have things that are wiser than me, things to share and teach. So I was, I saw this job come up and, and I'm currently not working and being a, a job that's generally a couple days a week so that's like part of my opportunity. I really, really was interested in doing something in the community or to the people and this just looks like a great opportunity and I, I have the skill set and I have the time. So I put my name forth, and here I am. Excellent. Well, I, I reviewed your uh, resume and all your qualifications, and uh, it seems like you have the, the, the right personality and uh, experience and drive. Pun <laughs> 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 intended. <laughs> to be uh, for, the, for this job. Uh, board members? Yeah. Um, so, Karen, I think I've known you most of those 24 years. I was so excited to see your yeah, name. I 
um, and I um, I can't wait to have you doing that job with our seniors I just think this is um, a match made in heaven I so appreciate that you put yourself forward for this thank you Mary. I appreciate that well I, I uh, after reading the resume and uh, thinking about this a bit and I just think that this is a great fit I think your empathy for seniors says an awful lot about you and I know that you, that you are one that wants to help and uh, I think you're going to be great in this job. Welcome. Thank you. Is that, is that you, Mary Jo? Yes, it's me. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Karen, this is Brendan Tedstone and I would like to say, I, uh, I also work in the senior uh, population with the senior population and it takes a certain person to have the patience and desire to do that. Um, you have certainly proven that you uh, that you will do that and that you want to do that. I will note that the uh, shoes that you're filling are physically and <laughs> historically huge to fill uh, for the last person who drove that bus. No, I've been told. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I heard. But uh, I'm sure they'll yeah. welcome me there with open arms. And uh, thank you for applying and, and uh, congratulations. And you can have lunch thank there. <laughs> Amy? It's good. Did I what? Lunch. <laughs> um, yeah. It's Thank good day. Nice yeah, I just found that, um, you know, it's a really important position to have filled in town. The seniors really need to be able to get around. I'm glad we found someone that is just the right fit for and has experienced that in the large hands and being so welcome. Thank Great. You. Great. So um, with that, I'm going to request a motion. Uh, to affirm the town manager's appointment of Karen Cooprider as a part-time uh, van driver for senior services. So moved. Second. Okay, hearing a motion has been seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Muriel Kramer, yes. Ted Stone, yes. Lafrenia, yes. Anna Rose, yes. Interfanis, really, yes. Congratulations, Karen. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Yeah. And finally, Mr. Chair, as a group, uh, Carmen Cifuentes, Sarah Murphy, Shannon Casey, these are part of our uh, communications team. We are uh, enlisting their services to assist us uh, on uh, traffic details. Excellent. Uh, great. Chief, you good with them? Yes. Great. You're going to have to get up. Thank okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, if the board has nothing to add to that, I move to uh, affirm. Where are they here? Uh, traffic constables. Yeah, the traffic constables. Come in. Sorry. I just have a question. Okay, yeah. I think it's awesome that that folks are have this opportunity. But how did it come to pass that that, that this is how we're doing it? How, how did we? How did administrative staff get chosen for this? Oh, um, in fact, the demand for traffic details is high. <laughs> yeah, I bet it is. <laughs> and thus, we rely on our police officers. Uh, that, in fact, we have a provision in the union contract that um, defines how we manage that process. We also reach out to our communications staff as well as our fire personnel to see if they can help. We are currently expanding that request to other town departments. Uh, and this afternoon was working, I was working with town council to see how we'll actually get to that point. So these are positions that are extended to existing uh, town staff to supplement and complement our detail officers. Great, thank you. So back to my motion. I move to approve Carmen Cifuentes, Sarah Murphy, and Shannon Casey as traffic constables. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Lafrenia, yes. Ted Stone, yes. Muriel Kramer, yes. And Eric Rush, yes. Andrew Fonas, really, yes. <laughs> and Mr. Chair, the last one, Shannon Beloin, as a police officer, I will with, uh, with your permission, uh, Chief Bennett and Maria Casey present here. Good 
evening. Good evening. Um, we would like to present Shannon Boulogne for your consideration of police officer. Shannon went through a competitive process and um, uh, which, which included uh, um, Chief Bennett, Deputy Chief Porter, myself, Sergeant Van Ralton, Officer Santoro, Officer Sager, and HR Generalist Kristen Merrill. And uh, we're presenting Shannon. She uh, was working for the town of Provincetown um, in the town for uh, just over five years. She has served in the role of a school resource officer, a reserve police officer, a community service officer, and a full-time police officer. She, her education, she um, attended the MBTA Transit Police Academy. She has her Bachelor's of Science in Criminal Justice. Um, she is currently pursuing her Master's in Law Enforcement Intelligence and Analysis. References in Provincetown spoke very highly of Shannon. Provincetown viewed Shannon as a future leader in their department and will feel the loss to the community of, of her leaving. She's described as someone who's intelligent, caring, genuine. She remains calm, poised, possesses excellent de-escalation de skills. And finally, Shannon has excellent communication and relational skills which served the department well and exceeded all their expectations in her role interacting with the community. Great, thank you. Chief? So I'd like to thank Maria, you and your staff and uh, everybody from my department that worked on bringing Shannon here tonight. Uh, as you know, there's multi-tiered process involving review of the applications to meet the minimum qualifications and interviews. But I'm here tonight to really celebrate the person that Shannon demonstrated to be in, in her oral interview with us. Um, by sharing some of her life experience, uh, I believe I'm sitting next to someone with the highest character and honor. Um, and I know that she'll fit in well in our organization and she'll serve the community of Hopkinton to the, to the highest level. So I'm, I'm really proud to be here tonight. I'm really proud to be sitting next to you, Shannon. Thank you, Chief. That means a lot, Chief, to, to hear that from you. And um, Shannon, I, I say that with all sincerity, that uh, hearing a recommendation from, from Chief Bennett means a lot. Um, what brings you here from, uh, from Provincetown? Are you tired of the beach? <laughs> <laughs> I could never grow tired of the beach, absolutely not. Um, it's actually a few different reasons. I've been looking to uh, grow roots somewhere, and while Provincetown is a great community, it's not somewhere I can necessarily grow roots. Looking to be uh, closer to friends, family, and also this, this community, when I looked up everything about the community, you know, the, the location is amazing. Um, the town itself is the size town that I'm looking for, right around 18,000 for the population. Um, the town of the, actu the police department is also something I'm looking for. It's, um, it's a little bit bigger than Provincetown, and that's kind of what I wanted. And also the administration, you really can't, from the things I've heard and how I've interacted with Chief and just, just the administration in general, um, it's, it's everything I could ask for, honestly. Wonderful. Well, I reviewed your resume and everything looked, looked great. And like I said, the recommendations that we're hearing from, uh, from Chief Bennett, it goes a long way, so. Uh, board members. Uh, yeah, I would love to, um, I often ask questions like this, I'd love to hear a little bit about your story, what brought you to the work of being a police officer. I'm also really intrigued by the fact that you have served as a school resource officer. Um, would, would love to see you know, that, uh, that possibly in your future too for us here. Sure, absolutely. So um, I've always wanted to be in law enforcement ever since I was very young. Um, I didn't have the easiest childhood growing up, I will say, um, which led to a fear of police at a very young age for me. So since then, I've kind of strived to do everything I could to change that fear of police. Um, and right now, I, I try and change it in both children and anyone I might come in contact with. Um, you know, as being a police officer in Provincetown, you know, my goal was to humanize the badge, and I try and do that every day, both on and off duty. Um, <clears throat> and is it, so you want to know more so about 
Just, it just, you know, I don't want you to do, do get more personal than you're, you're comfortable with, but just your, you know, you've already answered it. What brought you to police work and in your investment in that, that line of work? Um, <clears throat> I guess the only other question um, I'd like to ask you is, uh, I very often ask a visioning question too. How would you like to see yourself growing in the work of, uh, with a police department? Well, like I was saying before, is I'm looking for somewhere that I can really grow roots and establish myself. Um, so I'm looking strictly to grow within the department, and, you know, I kind of want to start out as a patrolman and see where it takes me. And like you mentioned before, I do have the SRO experience, and I also have mountain bike experience. And <laughs> I'm also a about the bike patrol, right? background investigator, a sexual assault investigator, so I could really go multiple avenues with this. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, <laughs> I was looking at your resume and I got very excited because I was a summer resident of Provincetown for <laughs> all through junior high, high school. Uh, we lived on Mayflower Heights and um, loved it and, and was friendly with, with a lot of police officers. And it was a very tough job, particularly with the insurgence of people for the summer, like me. <laughs> but uh, it's an amazing town. But tough work for, for a police officer. And um, I'm just very impressed with the, with the fact that you came from there. I was impressed that you were willing to go to Provincetown. <laughs> and um, with your educational resume, um, you've really been to quite a few places, haven't you, for I school? Have. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, I'm, I was uh, very surprised. Michigan? Oregon, Massachusetts, uh, were some of the places you went to college and university, and um, you are continuing with your education, and I think you're a perfect candidate for this town and this job, and uh, welcome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, Shannon. Welcome to Hopkinton. Um, one of the comments that you said um, was interesting to me, um, that you want to get rid of the fear of the badge. Uh, welcome to Hopkinton. Uh, there's not a lot of fear of the badge in this town. It's a wonderful, wonderful community. Uh, we've been in the past rated as number one safest community in, this, in the uh, country. Uh, we have a very diverse police department, as you can see. Uh, we have uh, management. Uh, the chief has been here for a long time. Uh, some of these guys that are sitting behind you, uh, they've been here for a long time. They've made a career here. Some people have lived here for their, for, through generations. Um, it's a wonderful town to be. I, I, uh, I'm, I say to everybody uh, when you're sitting in front of us, I'm sorry it took you so long to get off your JV team, but welcome <laughs> to the varsity squad. <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> and I joke around, but I look out here at, uh, at these uh, gentlemen behind you that you're going to be working with, and uh, I know most of them very, very well, and I wouldn't hesitate one second to put the life of myself, my kids, my wife in their hands. Uh, you're coming into an absolutely uh, very well-run police department, uh, one that I'm glad to be uh, call Hopkinton, uh, you know, to have them as our as our law enforcement officers in Hopkinton. Um, Hopkinton is not immune to the uh, everything that goes on nationally. We had a, a, something that went on nationally here uh, last year that was uh, um, um, that went on here. And I will say that our uh, law enforcement, uh, from the chief to everybody on here, uh, I was fortunate enough to, to sit in and watch how the operations ran. It's seamless, and, and uh, these guys definitely have uh, two different faces. They have the face, the friendly face, when they're out in the community and shaking hands and kissing babies. But they also, when it's time to do their job, it's amazing to see the switch flip. Uh, you're going to be trained by, the, the, in my opinion, the absolute best uh, around. So welcome to Hopkins. Thank you. You're welcome. Amy? Yeah, I, I really appreciate hearing from everyone about your qualifications and your high recommendations on reading the resume. And I really appreciate hearing this question and your response to it. And um, you know, it sounds like you're the right person to be on board here in Hopkinton. And I really appreciate that you have school research officer experience and that you had that experience of maybe not having a great experience with the patient member, but changing over time and coming into the work for that. So thank you very much. I don't think I have any further questions. Thank you. Great. Well, with that, <clears throat> I would uh, request a motion to affirm the town manager's appointment of uh, 
Shannon uh, Bloin as a police officer for the town of Hopkinton. So moved. If, I, if I may, Mr. Second. Chair. Yes. In fact, the motion should be to appoint Shannon Bloin as a police officer for the town of Hopkinton. The board makes the appointment. I accept that friendly amendment. Okay. And so, the, the, so moved. Does the person who seconded it? Second. Okay. <laughs> All right. We have a uh, motion that's been seconded. Uh, we'll take a roll call vote. Your Kramer, yes. Ted Stone, yes. Lafreniere, yes. And your yes. And your fondness yes. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank Good you. luck. Welcome Thank Glad to have you. Thanks. through this. We're not. I don't know. It doesn't seem like of course, of course. We'll have to talk. <laughs> uh oh. Congratulations, welcome aboard. Congratulations, welcome aboard. Welcome. Do you want the big photo? Chief. Chief. Yes. Do you want, want a group shot? Do you want to do a big picture? A picture? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very coveted prize. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful experience. Map. So next board uh, agenda item, the board will review proposed changes to the town's precinct boundaries based on the 2020 U.S. Census population count. Um, and we'll hear an update from Connor Deegan, the town clerk, and consider a final map for review and approval. The number of precincts would increase from four to five. Mr. Deegan. Hi there, folks. Uh, <laughs> thanks for having me back. Uh, last time that we spoke, we were still working on a draft map. Uh, so now we actually have a finalized map so we can have you folks approve it, but then we will be able to send it off to the state and they can get that all set for redrawing the district lines for the entire state. Um, so I know it was last minute that we got the description of everything in front of you, but uh, I think Ben can pull up the map up on the screen so we can all take a quick peek. and. I, otherwise, the, there were very minimal changes from the last time you saw a draft. Uh, the only real changes are we shifted a little bit of what was in uh, Precinct 4, which is the kind of more pink one over on the side there, into Precinct 2 just uh, because the uh, planning department had said there's probably some more growth and we didn't want to see it go above the 4,000 resident cap shortly after setting the boundaries. Mm -hmm. So, do we have like an equal distribution of population in all the precincts? Uh, it's roughly equal, so it's, I mean, it's as equal as you can get with kind of the numbers we have and some of the block boundaries, uh, but the goal is that no precinct should be above 4,000 residents. 
So what our goal was when we were putting together, um, our group that in town administration put together was uh, Norman is the town manager, Elaine Lazarus the assistant town manager, John Gelchik is the principal planner, and Lynn Kelly is my assistant town clerk. Uh, we put that together to make sure that everything was balanced enough that if there was some growth in areas that had more potential growth, there was a bit more wiggle room there for it to not hit that cap. Um, it's not a huge thing that'll affect us as of right now. We don't have representative town meeting or anything like that that's vastly affected by uh, how many people are in each precinct, but it's always good to have it as close to even as you can. And right now, all of them are within uh, a couple hundred of each other. Excellent. I mean, it looks pretty straightforward to me. Um, <clears throat> I don't see any gerrymandering there. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> uh, board members, any, any questions, comments? So I just wanted to ask, um, Connor, when we go to six, if that happens, that's when we have to have different voting? Nope. No, no, um, no. So we, we had the option to do six this time, yep. but it was going to be a little tough to swing budget-wise because we were prepared for for all the things that are going to come with five. Okay. But we weren't prepared for a sixth. We grew a little faster. They said we could do it if we wanted to, or we could wait and do it in 2030. Okay. Uh, so we have to bump up to the five and do six in 2030. And we uh, can still maintain a single voting site? Correct. Mm -hmm. With five, we can definitely so. still fit everyone in the brown gym, but we'll have to look forward to, in the coming years, having a potential larger space. Uh, you know, with some of the other projects that we kind of have in the tube, it's something worth looking at while we're making that planning process to, you know, build a space that we can continue to have a centralized and large voting location. Uh, I, like I said before, it's a big difference between telling someone, oh, you're in the wrong precinct, uh, just go over to that line there, or you're in the wrong precinct, drive across town and see if you can vote there. Um, so, I mean, for me, I think having the single polling location is a big, a big thing there. Yeah. Um, and then as of otherwise, the way that we'll vote for town meeting, that only changes if we want to change in our charter. So we'll continue to be open town meeting until yep. we deem otherwise. Okay. Mary um, Jo? I just, oh, I've, seen, I've seen this in the, in the office, but... Um, yeah, I, I think a, a single voting place is still a good thing. We don't have anything in this town that's really big enough or as big as a school in any of these other districts. So, and, and the way I see it is that the people of the town feel like they really own part of the school by only going in there a couple of times a year, but it's theirs. And they get to see it and they get to feel the ownership of it. and. I, I, I like having a single voting place for now. Okay. Uh, Amy? Uh, no, I think it looks pretty straightforward with the bigger conversation when we move to sex on that. This is a better plan. You have anything? Great. Uh, no, but Mr. Good. Chair, we move to accept as presented by the town clerk the 2020 re precincting plan for the town of Hopkinton. Second. Okay, we have a motion to second it. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Mayor Kramer, yes. Ted Stone, yes. That's you, Joe. Yeah. Well, Lafreniere, yes. <laughs> and your finest, yes. And your finest, really, yes. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much, Connor. Thank you, Connor. Um, and then I'm going to let you yeah. take over for, uh, I'll get it. for the next. i got to step away. Um, all right, so Mr. Nasrula is stepping off. I will take this next agenda item. Uh, Chapter 61A, Notice of Intent, Conversion of Use so, of Mechanic so, Street Property. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Uh, the hour being 6.52, um, the planning board appointment, I believe, was advertised for okay. 6.50. Okay, so let's do the planning board appointment. Yeah. Are there, uh, there's nobody here for the notice of intent, right? I don't see anybody here for the notice of intent, so we're going to have to open it and then go back to them. Okay, good. So planning board appointment. Select board and the uh, remaining members. <laughs> oh, come on up. 
It's a good look for you. <laughs> You've had some thought. Oh, I do. Good answer. <laughs> 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 so the uh, select board and the remaining members of the planning board will con consider filling a vacancy on the planning board with the term expiring at the end of the 2022 annual town election. First, let me confirm that the members of the planning board are present and can hear me. Uh, Gary, Cren Gary Trendle. Ben? They're coming. They're coming, okay. Um... Robert Benson? I see that we have Fran Young here. Present. <laughs> uh, Mary, Lo, Mary Larson Marlowe? Is she there? Present. Oh, there we go. Uh, Jane Murray? Gary is here as well. I'm sorry. For the chair. Gary is here as well. Oh, okay. Fantastic. I'm going to switch over to the panel and send it up. Log me out for a pause. Great. Um, Jane Moran? Is she there? Ben? Yes, for Jane Moran. No, Jane Moran. Jane Moran. Jane, Jane Moran. Uh, I see David Paul. <laughs> and I see Sundar. Present. Um, Shadow. Shadow. Shadow? Hey, Jane Moran. All right. All right. All right. Um, is the planning board meeting already in session? Gary? No, we are not. Okay. Um, do you want to open your meeting then? Um, sure. And I, I guess the, the hybrid process is new to me, so I don't have a... Do I need to read the meeting script at all, or what's the appropriate protocol for us to open the planning board meeting? Mr. Camarlo. Does uh, Mr. Trendell have to read the, the uh, open the meeting, the, the script, or can he just simply open the meeting for the planning board? Simply open the meeting for the planning board. All right, this is Gary Trendell, uh, planning, planning board chair, uh, and I hereby call the planning board meeting to order on October 19, 2021, 6.54 p.m. Great. If uh, the planning board is agreeable, I, I'll chair the joint meeting. You okay? Yes, we are. All right, great. So we've received two applications for the position. Are the candidates uh, James Burton and Ron uh, Pryfer here? So we've heard we've heard Mr. Burton. Is the other candidate on, Ben? Yes, I am here as well. Thank you. Great. All right, so I'll give each candidate up to uh, three minutes to describe their interest in serving on the planning board. And uh, we're going to go in alphabetical order. So, James? I got the watch. Boom. You're on. Three minutes. Excellent. I'm very interested in uh, learning about the process and being involved. Um, I was on the Legacy Farms Committee maybe about 10 years ago. Um, I had a lot of experience in real estate. I have about 20 certifications and designations. Um, so this would be a new experience where I can learn. Great. Right. Thank you. We'll get to that. Uh, yeah, we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, so, Ron, uh, you have three minutes to uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your interests. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so, uh, my name is Ron Reaper. Uh, no, thank you. No, I'm back talking. Um, so, I've been talking to now my wife and uh, two children for a couple of years now. We absolutely love this uh, city and But I've been talking to Gary and others. Uh, my hope is that by being part of the time board, I can contribute more back to the city that uh, I grow to love. Um, my experiences have been mostly up in the uh, you know, green orange area, as was pointed out in that map, um, top corner in that couple area. Yeah. So, uh, myself and two others that actually established the top area or wood coalition, the idea was to be more engaged with the, uh, the state when it comes to the new format. And so that has inspired me to like, you know, be more engaged with the community in some more grandiose plans. And, you know, as uh, James pointed out, sorry, sorry. as James pointed out, this is also a learning experience that you have and actually to learn more about what the city does. And, you know, my involvement here, as I mentioned, the Hopkins North Coalition, 
as well as uh, on board private schools, I find being the voice for parents is, is crucial. And so uh, hopefully um, this is something that I'll have the opportunity to be involved with and I'd be more than willing to answer any questions you may have. Great, thank you. Um, do any members of the uh, of the select board or planning board have any questions? Uh, I'll start with the select board. Go ahead. Um, so, uh, just a process question: If uh, folks want, if both candidates want to answer the same question, usually we allow yeah. them to do that. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily always apply. Um, <clears throat> James, I had a question. Um, just in full disclosure, I sometimes have concerns. Um, about folks who are professionally in real estate also serving on permitting um, boards. So I just have a question about how you would handle um, or what your thoughts are on any sort of um, per perceptions of conflict of interest and the challenges therein. That's a good question. I don't deal with new construction or uh, development planning, any of that. I have I just do residential real estate. But I've been trying to learn about different aspects of different things. So this would be an opportunity to do that. I had one more question for Ron, if that's Go ahead. okay. Go ahead. Um, Ron, I was interested in your work. Uh, we we uh, had a really great experience with Gary coming on board after neighborhood organizing. Um, very interested in your experience with your neighborhood, uh, coming together, working together. Um, what are your thoughts about uh, what the central role is of the planning board engaging um, over questions and concerns with organizations like your neighborhood uh, coalition? Um, so basically our coalition was specifically put together just to ensure that the uh, concerns at these areas well as possible in Roosevelt would have they have about the construction. It's not that we were putting up a roadblock saying that construction should happen and so it was not to compete with uh, or to uh, undermine climate. It was more of there are certain concerns with waters and run well and run and no things and other factors and so organizations such as ours, the coalition that may exist throughout the uh, Hopkinton uh, residential area, their voices should be have opportunity to come forward to the planet. Um, and again, the key thing is we are not here to uh, our little coalition, which is really small, but it's designed to work in concert with and to uh, point out areas that those that do not live this little bubble that we are up here may not hear. So I think that's the uh, synergistic you know, nature of a coalition like ours and the other planet. Thank you so much. Brenda, any questions? Um, no. Okay. Joe? <laughs> I just have a comment. I think, Ron, this is, this is not a, a, a resume. I mean, this is 10 yeah, pages. This is 10 <laughs> pages. <laughs> this is a book. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm an acquisition. We babble. As you notice, my answers sometimes tend to ramble. It's a, it's a poll that I acknowledge. And it's, uh, you know, when someone asks for it, I'm like, well, I already have because every year I have to submit it to the university and then I get their accreditation. And I'm like, okay, cut paste. And it did wrap it I don't think you did yeah. much cutting. Amy, do you have any uh, questions or comments? Yeah, I have a question for the two candidates. Um, so, as you probably know, when you serve on a town board, especially the planning board, you're going to have often enough times a lot of angry residents that come upset about something, yet you also have to be fair to the applicant. Can you talk about how you deal with, um, you know, contentious situations, maybe you have some new work for life, and how you balance that as a planning board member? I'll go first, if that's okay, James. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so, uh, Sadly, um, I have to deal with that on a regular basis um, as a professor uh, having people complain, whether it's about their grade or a parent that helicopter parents have been called and nothing asking what's going on. It's, for me, the most important thing in interaction, which can lead to just general hostility and tone, is to you know, calmly move down. It's, it's talking reason and 
it is impossible to appease every human being. Uh, you know, you can, uh, uh, these have to, people have to turn to like scenario. But it's about the respect when one speaks to somebody. And over the years, I've been in my various roles in leadership throughout my academic career, the, the need to speak respectfully to someone that is the most important thing that tends to diffuse most situations. And as long as you have the other person on the other end understands that they're concerned with being listened to, they cannot be addressed to me, but they're concerned with being uh, heard. James, same question? Uh, yeah, customer service skills, you know, listening, um, having a sense of urgency and answering questions, you know, follow through, follow up, you know, I'm very direct. Great, thanks. I am crazy about his quick answers. <laughs> <laughs> that is just what that board needs. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do any of the members of the planning board have any questions? Go ahead. Yeah, I do. Yeah, so hi, my name is Dave Paul. Um, my, my question is kind of a quiz to see how well you guys have been following the uh, planning board the last couple of years. Uh, so one of the topics we've been discussing is uh, commercial solar. And um, it's, been, it's been a hot topic, relatively. It's just the, um, the commercial, we, there's no issue with um, private secondary use of solar. Everybody's good with that. But with the primary, the commercial solar, the primary use is solar. And there's um, a lot of effects on neighborhoods. And what we've seen is uh, individual neighborhoods, it's like, OK, it's in my backyard. Let's get together and do something about this. But we haven't done anything at the town level to, to uh, come up with a solution. So um, I just wanted to get some thoughts on um, each one of you um, about commercial solar. And that's part of the quiz. Of, whether you've been following the, and if you haven't been following the planning board, that's fine. If you don't have any input, but thank you. Okay, I'm gonna have to start my stopwatch with the with the question. <laughs> three minutes. It's three minutes. Uh, I have not been following it in depth. I just know of random examples of people who are not happy. It sounds like it's a zoning issue. Uh, you know, I'm all for people's rights to build stuff on their own land, but that has to be balanced out to the community. Uh, actually, uh, before the uh, shutdown pandemic, I was able to attend a planning board meeting in the library, pointing out a certain uh, residential home there, and um, property that was looking into solar, uh, almost like a solar farm in my backyard. So my familiarity with that is based uh, on very as Iraq or interactions. Um, I got to have to agree with James that there's a balancing act between uh, um, personal rights and their own property as well as community and neighborhood that they are inside of me. Um, when it comes to commercial, um, obviously there's a different uh, threshold when it comes to, you know, can we have those parking lots that are silver above that are commercial area? Those are very popular and again, I don't know if see any conflicts with those. Mm -hmm. But again, you have to deal with those. Great, thank you. Any other uh, planning board members have questions? Fred? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so the question is to both individuals. Um, you guys have both served or been involved in various town projects. Um, you know, James with Legacy and, and Ron with the, the 495 interchange. My question is kind of two part. You know, what did you learn out of the experience working with the, with the town on those projects? And secondly, how would you apply that learning to your, your position on the planning board? Ronnie, you're up first. Okay, excellent. Um, so, yeah, you know, I did get pretty close on it. So, the experiences that I've had so far um, have been unusual to say least because it's all happening during COVID time frame. So, that face to face interaction is going to have been uh, thwarted. Um, but the experience that I've had so far is allowing me to understand the various uh, interactions with the different facets across the state level when it comes to uh, uh, Department of Transportation versus the state. So those um, Rolodex and contacts that I've developed over this time hopefully will translate well to the, uh, uh, the actual final work at the city level. James? 
I'm actually renting it at Lake State Farms while many houses are being built. And being on the one of the original committees when they bought the land, it's amazing to see how much progress it made and how clean and nice it is actually. Yeah. So uh, you know, it gives me a perspective of like a ten year plan. Great, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other planning board members uh, have questions? Mr. Chair. Go ahead. So um, I definitely applaud Ron. Um, he's been in the town roughly two years, I believe, as, as he said. And pretty, uh, already in this time, there has been a high level of civic engagement. So I applaud that. And um, it, it's an amazing thing that you know, he wishes to now serve in, in the planning board. So uh, kudos uh, for that level of civic engagement. Thank you, thank you. Um, I, I agree wholeheartedly, and I think this is a good problem to have with two qualified candidates. So, uh, Jane, do you have any? Sure. Um, as you both know, probably from serving on other activities in town, uh, it takes a certain amount of uh, commitment and time, but I've found over the years of all of the committees I've been on, planning board takes about one, the most amount of time uh, between the site walks and the weekly readings that we have to prepare for our meetings and doing other outreach. I'm just wondering if you personally feel as though you both have the time and the commitment and the interest for the long term. Ryan? Uh, well, the answer to that is really yes. Uh, and it's a that children now of a certain age where they need to uh, you know, babysit 24 7 has to be increased. Plus, I have a fantastic wife who is willing to go you know, even though she's professional as well, too. On those weekend, weekends where you have to go to a site and you know, to the work as a team to ensure that children's needs are still met. So that's not the case. So, yeah, the short answer is yes, the long answer is about the other. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <Good> you. <laughs> James, you're up. Same question. Yeah, I have an excellent wife as well. <laughs> and I so I can make my schedule to be whatever I need it to be. So whatever the committee needs, I can schedule it up and make it happen. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Gary, do you have any questions for the candidates? <clears throat> uh, no questions for me. Thanks. Thank you. And Mary, do you have any questions? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, Mary Larson Bottle here. Um, James and Ron, um, I think either one of you would be an excellent candidate. Um, I want to pose you a theoretical, if you were hiring for this position, what um, is uh, the main characteristic or trait, the most important characteristic or trait that you would be looking for? Uh, we'll start with James. <laughs> James? I can't wait to stand up. Oh. Um, Someone who's well-rounded, someone who's lived in town for a little while, um, someone who has some good world experience, some business experience, and some experience just in the communities in general. I'm also on a real estate committee, like the real estate committee, pro standard cement committee. Great. And uh, Ron, same question? Um, basically, it's for me, it's two things, the passion and Good colleagues, you know, they obviously have to work together. They have an experiment, there's a cohesive nature. We may not agree on anything, but there's a difference between public heads and fight. So, you know, and also have passion for this this, this actual what I'm going to see to see a thriving events for going to the next uh, decade. Thank you. Thank you. And is um, Ben, is Robert Benson on, on Zoom? Robert, can you hear us? Do you have any questions? I guess my question is, um, a, lot of, a lot of what we do is uphold the bylaws of the town. And with that, there's a lot of pushback to development, and those developments ultimately turn into homes or housing units that are sold. And uh, this question is specifically for James. Being a realtor and being an owner of a real estate agent, how do you, how would you not be in, how how would your work experience not be in conflict with the duties of the planning board and just upholding the 
what, what, what we have to do. <clears throat> well, I found that it, if it's any complex, you get you to accuse yourself and disclose it immediately. Um, I don't know if there's standing issues. I mean, I'm for growth, and I understand how the, the basic tax system across the town works to support the schools. So, I would say my perspective is balanced between development and keeping things where they are. Thank you. And uh, Shahidul, I mean, that was that was just directed to James. Um, Robert, did you have anything for for uh, Ron? Yeah, I, I joined a few minutes late, so um, if this is already been answered, we don't need to rehash it. But um, for Ron, uh, you've lived in town a couple of years, so at a high level, why why would you want to do this? <laughs> it, it's it, it's, <laughs> it, it, it's uh, there's a lot of energy and effort that goes into it. Like myself, I lived in Hawken, uh 30 some odd years, 35 years. So I have a vested interest in um, Hawkenham and I want it to be a great place to live now and in the future. But why, being only living in town a couple of years, why would you want to do it? Well, you had a great scaleship job there. It basically is a fair question. Um, my because of my uh, attacks, like I've always had an interest in being involved within the community in the past. I would build little things that I could, whether it's uh, uh, participating in a local newspaper or something like that. But since we moved here, um, my children are now in a place where they can stay and grow. And therefore, for me, how can I ensure that where I live, my children are now growing up, can be the best place? And hopefully for myself and my wife home when we retire, I can either sit in the background or be involved. And so this is the one that can make that feel like this. Do more and participate in the improvements, maintaining and the beautiful and the duplication of um, so that's the real passion and growth position. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then Shahidul? Do you have any questions? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I have a more general and open question for both the candidates. Um, first off, thank you for your interest and time. Uh, my question is, uh, what do you see as one of the major challenges for our town? And uh, I would like to hear your perspective uh, on the challenge and uh, your path to resolution. Uh, maybe Ron, you can start, and then we can hear from James. Um, so, for uh, for me, maybe the main challenge I've had so far is the schools are on this first hand of the states, and the influx of uh, new families with young children will only further push that. So, the uh, the possibility of having more residential areas is going to be a challenge. At the same time, you're seeing because the schools are doing so fantastically well. The home price is also going up currently. So those are the challenges that I see in the immediate future. How that is dealt with, obviously, we have to look into how we can ensure more of residential areas at the same time, ensure and maintain the internet. So it's a balancing act, which um, so I actually see what the input is uh, laid out at a higher level, if not provide a true solution. Those are the challenges that I see. I can carry it. Uh, my kids are in the school system, and you know, and I, I live over here at Legacy Farms now, so I kind of understand how the, uh, the crush of all the new students is filling up the schools. So the thing about Legacy Farms is it does a lot of income for the town because it's mostly duplexes <coughs> or condos, and they get more tax revenue than, than the big, big mansions. Great. I just want to say, Shaka could try to get them to solve it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> All right. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, this is for both of you. Uh, this vacancy we're filling, is it, is it yours? Mm -hmm. No, Deb's. No. Deb okay. This vacancy that we're filling is only till May. And in May, you're going to have to run 
for the seat. You're going to have to run for election. Do either of you have a problem with running? Getting out there and... Not physically. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let Ron go first. I do not. <laughs> okay. Okay. Alright. It's a real yeah. fun process. I was just gonna say it's so much fun. I think the latest position of healing is the fact that it is a it's a special election specifically, it is the short time frame. So therefore it's I'm not the right fit. And basically it's it saves a lot of tax income uh, the next year. Uh, I am right, but obviously I'll have more passion for it and therefore from my own marathon but running before I desire to say fun. Thank you. All right. Um, so the select board has a runoff voting procedure that we've used in the past. Uh, before I enter entertain a motion, I would like to ask each member of the board uh, of the board to indicate which candidate uh, they prefer for the position of the planning board member. Each member states their preference. Um, I guess, according to my script, I go first. So I'm going to say <laughs> uh, my, my preferred uh, candidate would be Ron. Question about process? Yep. What happens if there's a tie? I think we have an even number. No, we have 13. We have 13? Yes. Okay. Amy? I would prefer Ron as well. Brendan? Ron. Mary Jo? James. Um, you know what? I screwed up. I'm James. <laughs> I'm not James. I'm Brendan, but I'm voting for James. Okay. James. My bad on that So, Mary Jo, you're James also? I was thinking uh, Yes, Martin. I did say James <laughs> also. <laughs> okay. And Mary? Uh, Ron. Um, Gary? Uh, Ron. Robert? Ron. Dave? Ron. <laughs> What's in there? Ron. Uh, Mary? Ron. Fran? James. Jane? James. And Chihago? Ron. Okay, um, nine to four. Nine to four. All right. So we have a majority, um, obviously, for, for <coughs> to take a motion to uh, appoint uh, Ron Prefer to the planning board to a term expiring at the end of the 2022 annual town election. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, uh, I have a motion and it's been seconded. Um, Take a roll call vote. All right, sorry. Any any discussion? Here we go. Yeah, uh, I, just, I just wanted to say that whoever, you know, um, I hope that uh, James considers running in the future. You know, especially during the general election or if any other positions arise. And and the Zach is a great place as well, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So we'll take a roll call vote. Um, start with the planning board. I'm sorry. Start with the select board. Mira Kramer. Uh, yes. Ted Stone. Yes. Frandy, yes. Any other questions? Fondness rule, yes. Now we'll go to the planning board. Uh, Frandy Young, yes. Dave Paul, yes. Sunday Subraman, yes. Jane Moran, yes. Mary Ellison Marley, yes. Mary Ellison yes. Ryan Ellison, yes. So I think that was a, a double, both Shah Abdul and Rob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so. Um, Good. Congratulations, yeah. <laughs> Ron. You're on. We don't need to do anything formal. Thank you both. Thank you both. Thank you both. get in touch with um, Connor. Get signed in. Yeah. So you're going to need to get, get in touch with uh, with mm -hmm. Connor and take your oath. Three. He just has to close the meeting. Yeah, yeah that's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. Gary, uh, I believe you have a mo meeting to close. Uh, yes, I will entertain a motion to close the public meeting. Someone, Mary. Second, Mary. Second, Mary. All right, so we'll do our quick roll call votes. Uh, Mary. Mary, yes. Rob. Robert, yes. Fran. Fran, yes. Jane. Jane, Mary, yes. Donald. Fran, Mary, yes. Sundar. Sundar, Sundar, yes. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah. See you. Thanks. 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 Th
<laughs> All right, that now Irfan, you will step off the board. All right. Oh, now you're off. Ah. <laughs> so now we're going to get to chapter 16 of the conversion of use mechanic street property. The board will review a chapter 61A notice of intent to convert the, loose, the use of 11.62 acres of land currently in chapter 61A tax program to a solar farm use. Because it's in the 61A program, the town has the right of first refusal to purchase the land at fair market value. In this case, the land is being leased by the owner for the solar farm, but the town's option is still to purchase. <coughs> steps in this 120 day process for the town acting by and through the select board are one, to seek input from town departments, and two, if there's a desire to exercise its right of first refusal, hold a public hearing and take a vote, and three, <coughs> seek town meeting to uh, seek team, town meeting vote to authorize appropriation, and four, send notice of exercise signed by the select board to the owner, Mr. Kamala. <coughs> yes, the key point tonight is that at its last meeting, the board authorized staff to seek input from town departments. We have received some comments on the on whether the town should uh, pursue this parcel or not. Uh, the reason why this is on the agenda tonight is so that at least get a sense from the board whether you want to proceed with the public hearing. Okay. Based on input that has been received from town departments. All right. So. Um, I read all the, the comments. Uh, there were some town departments that uh, the police and fire most specifically thought that it would be a good parcel for a town uh, building, a uh, public, public service building. Um, <coughs> I cannot speak for the board. Actually, so I, I read all the, all the, um, the comments. Uh, board members, uh, Ms. Kramer. Uh, I, I read the comments too. Um, it didn't, it, and maybe I'm not right about this, but it didn't seem like there was an overwhelming um, enthusiasm to pursue further. Um, so if I'm wrong about that, if there is a department out there that really is interested in that particular piece of land, then um, that, that would make my input a little bit different. Um, but I think that uh, we, we haven't heard anything from the public. We, we have not received comments yet from the public okay so I, I guess the only thing I would say chapter 61 is is a is a big deal and near and dear to my heart um, and it is you know serves a very useful purpose um, and you know the town has a right to fully consider and residents have a right to fully consider the option to exercise the 61a rights and purchase it um, so I just want to make sure that we have really asked for input um, but I don't, so far, I don't sense a big enthusiasm for pursuing it. <clears throat> Mary Jo? Well, I, I have uh, been really studying this. Um, a lot of the land that's left over that they want to continue in 61A is very wet. And I wish they were here tonight because I would ask them what kind of agriculture they intended <clears throat> to use on the remaining 61A land. Um, the other thing is that the comment from the Conservation Commission that it's kind of a done deal and, and I'm looking at the map and I'm wondering what is <clears> this? <throat> it looks like solar panels, but I Can don't know. It? Oh, it's a garage. This right here? Yeah, it's got... That's a garage. Oh, there's more than one? There's mm -hmm. three? Okay. I know they have bees out there, which is a, which <laughs> is a good product. And I bought my honey there. <laughs> um, but I, I really, we really need to take a look at this and, and see about that, well, we don't have an assessor and we're going to need some help doing the conversion taxes because I don't think it's a rollback tax. It's going to be a conveyance tax. Uh, and then I was told that they were keeping the land and they were just going to lease it yes. to this company. Yes. Yeah. So they're just taking out a chapter land, but they're not selling it. Is that right? That is correct. That's right. Okay. That's, that's good. Answer some of the questions. Yeah. In, in fact, um, to your earlier comment about a done deal, my understanding is that the planning board has approved the solar farm. Well, yeah. And that's, you know, that's not the chapter land, though. And uh, 
I just wanted to see, because it's going to be commercial, what they're going to be paying on their land from now on under the solar panels and things like that. And I, I just uh, I want to make sure <coughs> that they understand and that uh, the this, this 61A, they, that they need a product, animals or some kind of a product have, in the remaining land. Yeah, they have. They have horses and cows. And For the remaining land, that, that it can be on that land. Well, I think you, if you look okay. at the map, it would be tough to get horses and cows on the other side of 495. Well, and they also have water, yep. lots of water. Yep. <laughs> so, yep. I mean, I don't have a problem with that. Just to, if I could, Mr. Chair, um, I think, I think, uh, I think that this situation raises a really inter interesting question, which I raised when I was actually had the pleasure of serving on the planning board. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and that is, you know, the town having the ability to consider exercising their rights um, and, and being noticed before a piece of property is permitted in a certain way. It, it just raised an, a unique challenge. Um, it's not going to be sold. Um, it was a piece of property that might have been um, might have been of interest <clears throat> to the town for the water department, but but the water department has, has taken a pass on it. Um, but it's just it's not necessarily this piece of, of land, but for the future, um, the implications of being able to take a piece of property out um, for leasing um, and changing forever. Brendan, you asked at a meeting previously whether we would then get our rights back if. The so if the commercial use was was no longer there and that doesn't happen it's it's just no. it's a challenging yeah. a challenging question the town has made a certain investment in our neighbors and their ability to 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 preserve their property and pay lower taxes and then um, this is it almost feels like we uh, that we don't really get our full opportunity at it with the the leasing I don't know I, I, I don't really have a huge issue I'm just it's a complicated question yeah it, it, it is you, you also raise I think a valid point in terms of the lens owners ability to permit before they notice the town yeah 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 I agree Amy yeah so my question um, I, I tend to agree with Maria that, um, right, that the town departments don't seem to have a very desire for us to exercise our rights here uh, and as the Open Space Preservation Commission asked um, if the solar farm didn't end up happening, would we still get our right of refusal back or, or, or when the lease ends since it's not changing hands? I think I'll toss it back to answer that question. I think you have to uh, reapply for Chapter 61 and start at the beginning for that amount of land. It's not automatic that... Uh, we get anything back because we're taking we're going to take money now we're going to charge them for <coughs> the past right. okay so i remember this project coming before the planning board when i was on there and it was generally not very controversial it's near 495 the others um were agreeable um i, I don't mind waiting for another meeting to decide if we feel like we need to hold a public hearing but my general inclination would be not to exercise our rights in this case through the chair. Um, I believe the idea is to decide tonight whether to schedule the public hearing <clears throat> so that we keep the process moving forward. So if, if we schedule a public hearing tonight, um, does that mean that they're moving forward? Or, or, or if we don't, if we choose not to, to, to schedule a public hearing, then we're, at this point, we're saying that we're, we don't want to buy the, the land? The, the right. Land. Correct. So, <laughs> I would make a motion to not schedule a public hearing on this land. Meaning that the town, that they can proceed. Yeah, you know, I, I have a personal preference for motions in the affirmative that can be voted down because they're just more clear. Um, so, I'd make a motion to schedule the public hearing, but I'm very comfortable voting it down. Okay, I'll second that motion. <clears throat> and it's a roll call vote. Uh, Nero Kramer, no. Mr. Frenier? Lafrenier, no. Ms. Ritterbush? 
Uh, Red stone now, so it carries four to zero. Okay. Erfron, come on back. <laughs> so I think your motion was to not do it. My motion was to do it. Oh, okay, okay, good. Yeah. I just have a preference for affirmative motion, so it's really clear if you're voting yes or no. Right. Not that you Okay, know. so now where are we? <laughs> so now we are on the board committee orientation handbook. Oh, which is amazing, by the way. Yeah. Yes. yes. Elaine? Uh, um. Is Elaine on? Elaine. I am here. Hi. All right, you're up. We had a chance to look at that. It was uh, pretty comprehensive. She said Thank she you. would take five minutes. Um, I'll be very brief. I uh, just uh, wanted to note that I started this out as an um, FAQ document, but I <laughs> Uh, tries to cover a lot of the administrative things, the practical things that boards and committees and their staff may find helpful um, as they do their business for the town, um, such as remote participation and things like that. And I also included the town charter as an appendix because I think, I think people don't know what a great resource it is for many of the commonly asked questions. And I also want to thank the people who reviewed it and uh, gave me feedback during the process, the board committee members and town staff. And then after this, we would finalize it and make it available to everyone. Also, want to thank Amy for her comments, and um, I will incorporate those. Awesome. Um, you need to do something for that? I've got nothing. Go ahead. Comment. Anyone, any, anyone have comments? No, I just uh, really appreciate it. Um, it's an excellent resource, and I think that um, it's really wonderful, especially for folks that are new to this. The process <clears throat> and the systems, but also for those of us who are do have been doing it for a long time, there's a lot of uh, really wonderful information in there. <clears throat> Good, Mary Jo. No, I just wanted to say thank you uh, for all Elaine's time and what she's doing, and we certainly can use it. And I think it's a very good resource, particularly for new people coming into town. And uh, I thank her. I printed it all out already for myself. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, Amy. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with the others. I think this is a really good idea. It would be helpful, especially to the committee members. And I saw a couple of suggestions to Elaine, but otherwise, it would great to me. And you're all set? Mm -hmm. And uh, Elaine, I just want to say great job. Um, I was just looking through it. It's very comprehensive. And I know, like, uh, for any anyone who steps into a new role, um, it's nice to have something to refer to. So, very well done. In fact, Mr. Chair, through you, um, great work, Elaine. This is part of our effort to institutionalize our best practices. Mm -hmm. And Elaine picked up the <coughs> most difficult challenge. And she did a fantastic job. Absolutely. Yeah. Mr. Kamala, was, would you consider this a fantastic job or maybe a clearly outstanding? <laughs> <job>? Clearly outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> clearly outstanding. Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you, Elaine. That was great. Yeah. Thanks, Elaine. <clears throat> Um, so on the agenda, we do have uh, uh, another agenda item of complete goal setting by the select board. Uh, we're going to be passing on that, but I do want to just make a comment uh, for all of us to do our homework <laughs> and send in um, our, our you know statements and send them in so we can. Uh, Are you looking at me specifically? No, no, he's looking at me too. Does that one person? Like uh, the chair who did not. All right. So um, if we can all do that, I, I think need to the, find more water. Question. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, the one person who did is the one person who's not here. <laughs> yeah. Nice job, Amy, of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> so that then brings us to the town manager report. Yeah, um, through the chair, we included in your pocket the comments received from uh, Dave and uh, Michelle on the Main Street Corridor project. I can share again with the board that the comments we received from the public uh, regarding preparations for and during the marathon were very supportive. Uh, and also, uh, I've been watching the traffic the last two days. <laughs> Dave's idea of pushing for grading to the final layout is paying off. We are able to continue the two lane uh, in it, um, going in, in, in neither direction, um, even during some of the most difficult uh, and, and, and challenge, challenging placements of the undergrounding ducts. 
-hmm. So, thanks to Dave, we're able to continue for the most part the two lane traffic. Right. Mr. Cloud, um, with Mr. Westling here, um, if, I don't know if it's appropriate. I don't want to get in the day to day operations of the town, and please mm -hmm. stop me if this is not appropriate. But, Mr. Westling, the way that they've repaved the center of town for the marathon, I think it's a, a great chance for us to build moving forward as they start doing curb cuts and, and ripping it up that we really, really hold the contractors to uh, w when they uh, when they close the trenches to really hold the contractors to uh, keep the, the grade so it's sustainable for people to have vehicles. Um, everywhere I go, I get ra ripped, ripped, ripped about uh, about the condition of the road. I mean, I understand it's a massive construction job, but at the end of the day, when they're leaving and they're and they're rehot topping or they're coal patching or whatever, and and just to make sure that they really keep a a, a firm eye on the on the trenches. And then I know I know that they settle, and maybe we can call them back and have them have them fix it. But if the traffic itself is one thing that we really don't have too much control over during this Main Street corridor project. The one thing that I think would appease a lot of the people, <coughs> like the elation when when the t center was repaved and yeah. people could drive through, <laughs> it was great that there was no traffic, but the fact that their their teeth aren't getting shaken out of their head, I think that it's a, we have a chance to build on it because it's, it's resurfaced now to try to keep it as, as level and smooth as we possibly can. To the chair, your point is well taken. Uh, and another piece of update, we are, uh, Eversource is going to be resurfacing South Street before Snow Flies, so that other section of road is in bad condition. Yeah. Yep. That'll also be taken care of. Perfect. Thank you. Great. I didn't mean to call you on the spot, but I really did. <laughs> but he did it anyway. Yes. I was just going to say, I, I think that was intentional. I don't, yeah. I don't think it was. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah again, um, on, on that point, good work by John, in fact, uh, I was visited by um, uh, the Vice President for Government Relations at Eversource just to um, get the confirmation that they will, they will be a good neighbor down at South Street. Yeah, they always have been. Yeah. yeah. Um, budget update. Following the select board meeting, uh, alongside the school committee and the appropriations committee, we sent specific budget guidance uh, to all town departments, boards and committees, and commissions uh, that have an annual spending responsibility. Um, thanks to the efforts of uh, uh, Tim O'Leary and, uh, and, and Ben, ben Sweeney, um, we provided individualized budget templates uh, for the operating budgets uh, to each department uh, so that they, in fact, they were pre-populated uh, with prior year budget data so that when we make this information public, uh, public uh, available to the public. The public will be able to see last year's budget alongside the budget that has been proposed. Uh, the worksheets also included sections for linking budgets to strategic objectives uh, and performance metrics. I think you may have seen the current annual town report really highlighted and emphasized what we consider to be the operational metrics for each individual department. So that is now tied to the budget process. Um, we set the deadline for November 1st, uh, so we're hoping that the senior management team are working alongside the town manager and the finance team will begin uh, their reviews soon after the, um, the, the, the first week in November. Uh, we're hoping to accelerate the reviews of the requests uh, and complete them perhaps um, by the end of November so that we start bringing the department heads before the select board uh, first week or second week in December. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. And then the last update is uh, PFAS. In fact, John, I, <laughs> today's just been a very busy day for me. I wanted to reach out to you and let you know that uh, there was coverage on radio today regarding PFAS. And in fact, what I learned is that at the federal level, more standards are coming. So what's the update? <coughs> <coughs> Just 
Just uh, before you start, this is the, the thing that I've been hearing about from uh, peers and contacts in, mm -hmm. in town, too. People are very interested in hearing what you have to say. Yeah, through the chair, uh, the steps that we've taken to date, we sent the required public education certification of DEP on October 14th, and that certifies that we met the standard for notifying the public within 30 days. Uh, the DEP, uh, excuse me, the DPW has been responding to numerous calls and emails from the public with <laughs> questions about PFAS. Two primary questions that we're receiving. Number one, the water that I'm receiving at my home, do I get it from well number six? And the answer is that all of our eight wells, as well as the water that we purchased from the town of Ashland, all gets combined into one water once it hits the distribution system. So we're not able to tell folks whether they're getting water from well number six or whether they're not. Um, we do direct them to our DPW website, and there's additional information there if they are concerned about it or in a, in a uh, category of folks that are, uh, need to be concerned about it, whether they're pregnant, whether they are nursing, whether they are small children, or if they have a, a compromised immune system. The second uh, question that we're getting the most about is whether or not folks on private wells have to be concerned. Our response to them are two things. Number one, they can get their wells tested if they wish. And number two, if they don't have, uh, if they don't want to have their wells tested, which can cost up to $600. If they don't want to have their wells tested and they're concerned, they can just drink bottled water if they're in any of those categories. Uh, the second round of PFAS testing showed that we still exceed the maximum contaminant level of 20 parts per trillion. So we have one more month's worth of testing, and if we're found to be then uh, still above, then it kicks us into another category of uh, criteria that we have to meet. I'm coordinating with MassDEP to schedule a public informational meeting. MassDEP will have Mary Jude Pigsley, who is the Central Regional Director, and Mariel Stone in attendance. We'll all have rep also have representatives from town departments and Weston and Sampson engineers in attendance. And we'll also have the meeting televised over HCAM mm -hmm. and we'll record it so that it may be posted on our website. And that meeting will occur on Tuesday, October 26th at 5.30 p.m. A notice will be going out and we'll publicize that with the Zoom link. PAR Engineering will update the town on its findings related to the potential MWRA connection on October 20th, tomorrow. PAR indicated to me that it is possible to engineer a connection to receive the necessary 2.2 million gallons per day of water from the MW MWRA through an indirect connection in Southboro that will meet our future maximum daily demand. Uh, and then if the average of next month's test is also above the maximum contaminant level for PFAS, then we'll be in violation technically of the drinking water regulations. And if we find that we are in violation, then we must do three things. We must send out a public notice stating that we are in violation because we've had an entire quarter or three months worth of testing above their maximum contaminant level. Secondly, we must develop a short-term alternative for water supply. For example, other communities are issuing a credit on water bills or they are distributing bottled water. There are a number of other ways that we can uh, provide that alternative source. And we must also develop a long-term plan to remove PFAS-6 from our drinking water. And that can be done through a couple of methods. We can either build water filtration plants or we can connect to the, to the MWRA to just be provided with their water, which is PFAS free. Those are our updates. Great. Um, where is the meeting being held with uh, DEP? Uh, it'll be a virtual meeting okay. via Zoom. Okay. Great. Okay. Any questions? At yeah. What time again? I'm sorry. Five thirty on uh, the twenty sixth. Mr. Westerling, you said that we exceed the 20 parts per trillion uh, level right now. <clears throat> when, first of all, what's the federal, is, is 20 pounds, parts per million, is that? Trillion. I'm sorry, trillion, yeah. Um, is that the federal guidelines? Through the chair, the federal guideline is 70 parts per trillion. trillion. Yeah. And when we, were, when we initially um, were found that we exceeded the 20 parts per trillion, what was our initial level? It was like was it twenty point eight parts per trillion? Uh, we had to do a test and then a confirmatory test, and I believe that the average of those two was twenty point seven. Twenty point seven. <clears throat> and where are we at presently? If you bear with me, I can pull that up. Just receive that information. I believe we're at twenty four parts per trillion. 
Oh, so it's going up. So it went up. Okay. Uh, according to DEP, we may see it go down because the groundwater levels can affect uh, mm -hmm. the PFAS levels. The groundwater levels are dropping. Uh, the fact that we are now pumping less out of our wells can affect the PFAS levels. Mm -hmm. So we'll find out. Those, that sample has been taken. It has been sent to the laboratory, and we're waiting for the results of that. So we'll know very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have comments or questions? No, I really appreciate these updates, though. I think the, the public really appreciates them as well. So thanks for doing a great job with this. Mr. Chair, thank you for your kind words. Appreciate it. I, I was going to um, just like Mary, I feel like there are a lot of comments from the public on this, and we're glad you're having an event. And I think I'll go ahead and send some questions to you that I've been hearing, maybe so you can have those for your presentation. My thought was I read that the PFASs are in a lot of product, consumer products, but I didn't know if the sustainable grain company might want to partner with you on how we can reduce our PFASs in other ways through avoiding micro popcorn and um, you know, not dick or and things like that. But thank you very much for the update. Through the chair, I appreciate your comments and I look forward to the questions that you can forward to me and we'll reach out to the Sustainable Green Committee. Yeah. Thank you. Know. Yes. In fact, in terms of public education, what I heard this morning is that uh, the EPA uh, uh, is going to be releasing a new, um, um, new, new guidelines where they will be regulating different PFAS differently, mm -hmm. um, realizing that PFAS is found in so many things that we're already using at home, uh, and some of it is even in the clothes that we wear. So, right. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so we'll we'll be getting more of that uh, guidance shortly. I mean, uh, yeah, my understanding was that perhaps it could be out in the next three or four weeks. Uh, and in fact, the the the, the key uh, theme from the story was that uh, the EPA will be requiring uh, manufacturers to now post specific information on PFAS, so that will help in the public education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. Right. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, liaison reports. Anyone have anything? I met with Open Space. Um, I mean, I, I was at their meeting the other day, and they've got a lot of uh, a lot of good ideas. Okay. Yeah. Chaired by Ed Harrow. Uh, I went to my first budget advisory committee meeting, so I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to that. Go figure, I said that sentence out loud, right? <laughs> but I really appreciate the opportunity to be part of that, um, those discussions, um, and look forward to learning more. Great. Mary Jo? Well, I've just been in contact with the Marathon Committee mm -hmm. <laughs> over the uh, weekend, <laughs> and um, it, I just want to give accolades to that committee and to the VA for getting any kind of race off under the circumstances that they've been, you know, given. And uh, I hope that we're in a better place in the spring so we don't have to have a rolling start. <laughs> <laughs> I like the rolling start. That was oh, it took reminiscent forever. of the old days. I yeah, thought it was it really forever. cool. And I wasn't here, but... We don't have 30,000, and by the time the last ones came over the line, the race was already completed in Boston, so... Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought I thought it was really they well did run. spread them out. If they did cool. spread them out, and uh, yeah. they did do a good job at what they needed Absolutely. to do. Mm -hmm. Terry, do you have anything? Yeah, I was just going to say, one of my liaison roles this year is the library trustees. Uh, it used to be Brian's role, so I'm going to go to my first meeting that next week. And I attended the Zoom, the Appropriations Committee appointing. Uh, appointing authority meeting and I'm pleased that we had a full slate a lot of interest in appropriations committee this year so that I'm great to have it's time to see them uh, get on board and thanks for it. Yep. Thank you. And uh, I guess you stole my thunder on that one so <laughs> all right uh, future agenda items anyone have anything? I just like to say so I after our last meeting we went up to the um, cultural arts building and I'd like to give Mary Jo some accolades. She did a wonderful job uh, yeah. representing mm -hmm. our yeah. town and our board at that, uh, at that Bobby Gibbs statue. Really, really knocked it out of the It was Mary really, yeah. Yeah, you did a great job. Thank you. Yeah. I'm thank, you, you said, <laughs> well, thank you, Norman. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Jo. Yeah. You, you really did a spectacular job at a very, very moving uh, event. It was really probably one of the best things I've been to. It was a nice event. Yeah. Yeah. She was wonderful. 
talk. She's amazing. And she talked. She was she was She's absolutely amazing. amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, and sets a lovely example in the world. Yes. Um, I have a question. So congrats to everybody, the marathon. Um, uh, and and look, we get to do it all over again in quick time, right? In a few months. Yeah. yeah. So uh, bless everybody's heart who actually puts that together. Um, but I wondered um, about the the charity bibs and the abbreviated time, and if you know what the process is for those, and are there limits? I mean, I know, I, I don't know how yeah, they all. Yeah, we can talk about that offline or so we need to agenda. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to understand it from the public's perspective. Right. I think for, for bottom line, people so appreciate that, um, that opportunity and, uh, and the availability of those bids. It's amazing. So. It's, it's a great asset for the community. In fact, I was looking at some of the preliminary figures from the fundraising. One invitational entry raised approximately $30,000. That's amazing. Wow. It's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, very local one too. Yes. Yeah, and um, you know, I've received. Uh, I think the whole board received an email describing a very uh, heartwarming story. Yeah. The person who received a bid, and um, it raised my. It's just incredible. So I mean, those charity bids are, are huge, and I'm yeah. glad that we, it's always on our radar. So with that, I will entertain a motion. Uh, my favorite of the night. So I move to close this meeting. Second. All right. Motion and second. Any Go questions? Sox. Go Sox. <laughs> Hearing none, roll call vote. Muriel Kramer, yes. Touchstone, yes. Lafreniere, yes. New York, yes. And Irfan Nasrullo, yes. Amy, it's great Thank to you see everyone. you. <laughs> good yeah, it's good to see Amy. Go Sox.